Hello everyone and welcome back to Code and Chat with Zach. Okay, so in our last video, part one, I showed you the basic uh, functions of Packet Tracer. Today we're going to take just a couple of minutes and learn how to uh, pull out components and how to connect them as well as how to change out hardware components. Alright, so the first thing, let's say that we have a uh, we need a switch, so we can click on switches, and drag that out. These, of course, are your different models. And let's say that we need an end device. We just want a desktop computer. Okay, so we drag those out. Now we want to connect them. So we go over here to this colored lightning bolt, and we will ch um, pick the copper straight through. So we uh, click that, and notice we get the circle with the line through it. So now we have our little in connection. First thing we'll do is go to the desktop PC1. All right, and here we only have one connection port, fast ethernet zero. So we'll go ahead and put that in here. Now when we connect here, we have one through 24, as well as the console. Now the plug-in scheme, is up to you or may be directed by your instructor. However, today we're just going to use the fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. Alright, so notice now we have a green light here and a orange light here. That means that the switch is powering up and that it is, um, well, it's powering up. It takes a certain amount of time for it to turn on just like a real switch in order to um, transmit data. Now notice we have this packet envelope right here, this little plus envelope. Okay, notice that they both went green. This works the same as ping. Now if we tried to use that right now, we go from here to here, we will have no functional ports and that's because we have not established those, we have not set those up. However, you can use that like a ping. And it's an easy way to test a network. All right, now notice here we have a model number for the switch as well as the PC. We have the switch name and we have the port that we're connected to. So go over to options to preferences. We'll slide this over and let's look at what these do. Okay, show device model label. So if we turn that off, we no longer have the model numbers. This is our device name labels. So if we turn that off, we no longer see the device name. Now one thing that's interesting is if we go into here, we double click, and we go to the config, and let's say we change the name. Notice switch 3. And let's say we're going to call this S1 for switch 1. And we close that now it is changed there. And maybe this is, uh, let's say that this is the office computer. So let's say office computer. Notice that changes here. Now what does not change are the model numbers. So many times you'll want to have the individual device name showing, but not necessarily the model number. All right, the next one that's really important is this port labels. If we turn those off, we no longer see which port we're connected to. This is usually a very good uh, recommendation when you're building your network, especially because as you're setting up, if you've had several, so let's go ahead and add a couple of more end devices and you'll see how it gets to be very beneficial. We'll go ahead and connect that. We'll go to the second one there and then we'll go to the third one here. As you see it can get complicated with which port is each device connected to. So when you're configuring your network either by using the interface here or you're using the command line, it's nice to be able to look at it and say, oh, PC3 is connected to a fast Ethernet 0 slash 3. However, you may not want that on your final 
in order to clean it up. So you can clean it up by making those connections or by removing that and it only shows the connections. Now this is a good example of what can happen and why these lights, these animations are so important. Notice connection green and green, green and green. However, we do not have one here. So if we click on this and we come over to look at it, it doesn't readily show what's going on. Well, the problem is, is that it is not connected to your device. And so we need to delete it and reconnect it. So if we hit the red X, it asks us, do you want to delete the selected item? Notice the selected item is this computer, so no, we do not. Now we get this crosshair. We can click on there, go back up to our arrow, and once again, go into our fast ethernet, and connection, now we have a full connection. Um, let's see, some other things that are important for you to know. Let's go ahead and drag out a router. Oops, we'll grab it and drag it out. So now we want to connect these. We can do this the same way. And we have, we'll go from here to say here. And again, we have a fast Ethernet connection from each one. However, let's say that you have another router here. Actually, let's drag out a couple so we can show the different options. Okay. So let's say from this router to this router, we want to go with a fast Ethernet connection. We'll use a cable crossover and we'll go from fast Ethernet. Now, but let's say that from here to here, you want a gigabit or a serial connection. If you click on the um, device you're looking to modify, notice we have the back panel under the physical. We have a power switch right here, a little green light, and now that device is off. And these are the different um, additions or plug-in uh, slots that we can fill with these devices. And each one shows you what they have. So for instance, this one right here has two serial ports and this one provides four switching ports. Each one has different, uh, this one has basic telephone connections. And so you may have to read what you need to add in. This one provides a single serial port. This one is a cover, so we could just say, well, we want to cover that one, and now it's covered. And let's say that we want to go ahead and add two high-speed serial connections. So we drag that over there, and then we turn the device back on. So now, if you highlight over this, you'll see that we have two fast Ethernet, as well as two serial connections. And if we want to make a serial connection here as well, we need to turn that one off. Let's say that here we just need a single. We can turn that back on. And now we can use a serial connection from serial 00 to serial 00. And now we can make a serial connection. One other thing to look at is some of the machines, they will have gig gigabit connections or different instructor uh, specifications and you can find those going through here. I want to show you one more trick. Let's go ahead and drag in a single serial connection. Turn that back on. If you are unsure of what connection, you can simply choose the automatic and go from here to here and it will find the correct connection for you. Now one thing that is not showing and again, that is important. So let's go to our options, to our preferences. And let's go ahead and add the port labels. And notice that now it's also showing us our clock connections. So this will show you on which port, in this case, serial 001 or serial 000, that has your clock rate that needs to be set. And of course, you can set that from inside. Again, if you need to delete something, if there's nothing highlighted, it'll just give you the X, and you can come down here and delete it. Um, one other thing, and we talked about it in the previous, but I'll show it to you one more time, is this notes. 
So you can type in whatever notes you want, whatever notes, and once you click out of it, it will show up there. If, however, you want to get back into it, notice I try to click on there, it just adds a new text field. Come up to here, click the R, click it once, and now you're in for me. And you can click back out of it. Finally, if you click it one time with the left mouse button and you hold it down, it allows you to move it wherever you like. Well, I hope this was beneficial. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And thank you very much. Happy coding.